inside diameter of this tube is about 22 millimeters so I've acquired uh, a steel bar that's also 22 millimeters outside diameter so that slides down there quite nice and neatly and that basically means I haven't got to turn this down a great deal. Uh, this anvil doesn't need to be a critical length so if I chop it off about here I can uh, basically face off either end, put this in the chuck and just take this down to give the shoulder that I need uh, and then bore the internal which uh, I need to do with a, a slot drill because I need a, a flat end here so that's the next job. I don't know what happened to the sound on that last section, but anyway, here it is. Uh, it was originally going to be 40 millimetres long. I've measured this, and it's actually 50 point, well, spot on 50 I'm getting there, in fact, 50, zero, zero. So I've made that slightly longer than necessary because I can always trim it down. The outside should be 22, but I think this bar might be actually imperial, so it's 21.87, but that's close enough. Uh, the shoulder section should be about 17, and I'm getting... 16.9 so that's close enough the internal hole seven millimeters i did that with a slot drill 705 and it should be about 10 millimeters deep and i'm actually getting 10.5 that's good enough and the depth here should be about 16 1601 so pretty close to what i was uh, originally planning so that's going to do uh next stage i think i'll do this and for my uh, punch pin at the end I'm just going to use a 10 mil bolt to begin with because that's got a good 40 mil of travel on it I may need to turn this down a little bit shorten it but basically just drill a hole through there that'll drop in uh, and that'll do for a start I'll probably end up making a proper one of these in due course but for a test let's uh, keep it simple and do that bit next getting a little tight so open this up now with a nine millimeter bit and then carry on with the five now I've got a bit of clearance step, run it through with 10 mil, half a mil either side. And with a bit of luck that should. Perfect. So that's that one done. The firing pin's Probably one of the most tricky parts to be honest, the coupler needs a little bit of attention as well. But uh, this is already cut down to size and I faced the ends off and I've marked out where it needs to be cut to as per my diagram. I did spend a bit of time messing around with the angles on this to get the maximum 
uh, travel but at the same time it's got to tilt a certain degree and this pin can't be too narrow otherwise it gets too weak and uh, quite a few devil in the detail there. This end piece needs a point on it so that it can't stand on its end that basically causes it to tilt and then you need some relief angles on the side so that it can tilt in the barrel without fouling anything. So clearly once I've cut this and probably given it a bit of a file to smooth it up, not going to be able to chuck on there. So I've got to work my way from this end down. So I'll start with this 7mm pin which is 52.5mm long up to this shoulder. Then I'll do this uh, central section 43 uh, and a half by 15. Then I'll probably swing the top slide round and come in to take this angle off so that it'll straighten up when it bites into the coupler. And then spin the whole thing round and do the tip. Right, got this... Uh front section done and set it up again. There's a little bit of run out in it but it's not critical. Main thing is that will drop onto there so this now needs to come down to here 15 mil. Uh, I'm going to lose this mark but I'll rescore that afterwards and then put the taper in. down to 16 now. I've just reseated it because this was starting to wobble a bit. And that's 15.6. So, a little adjustment there. I'll do this using screw cutting mechanism so I get a power feed at a nice steady rate. And that's fifteen point one. So Maybe just a whisker. And that is... Well, 15.1-ish. I'll leave it as it is, it's close enough. And then I need an 8mm taper. Right, so now I just need to swing the cross slide around so that I can come in from this side and just taper that down. According to my numbers, this should be a 30 degree taper, but I'm going to start at 40 uh, and then take it down a little bit to see how close we are. Well, that's reasonably close. I think it does need to be slightly steeper, but maybe we'll just try it at that. It's up for about 10 degrees and I'll just take it until we get to the midsection of this. And lock that down. Okay, I think that's close enough for that one. Okay, I've now got 10 degrees coming in this way, so we'll just take this off. I don't want to come too far in, so because uh, otherwise it might compromise the spring. So hopefully,
I keep losing the sound for some reason, but I finished the pin, everything's cut down to size. I've filed the end here, so that's the finished pin and that's the bits that aren't the pin. And compared to the, my enlarged version, it's significantly larger. And compared to the original centre punch, well, the pin's actually as big as the whole centre punch. So it's going to be quite a beefy thing. Uh, did get a little bit of an issue with that shoulder. As I expected, it's slightly... Uh, going inside the spring. I don't know if I can put a washer on there to contain it, but we'll see. Worst case, I could cut this again and possibly take the uh, taper right the way up to that shoulder so that the spring sits behind it. But uh, we'll give it a go. It does at least wiggle inside the barrel quite well. And with the spring placed on it and held down, we do have a reasonable amount of plunger force there. And that, of course, is just a return spring. So by the time we've uh, added the main spring. Uh, it should be quite powerful, but next stage will be to cut this coupler, bore this out on the inside, and then we can chop the springs down, drop the anvil in, assemble it, and see how well it works.